there is one closely watched team in Pyeongchang that is not competing. They are known unofficially as North Korea's Army of Beauties. They are the country's cheerleading squad, and they arrived amidst much fanfare and curiosity, more than 200 of them making a rare collective appearance outside of North Korea. Sung Yoon Lee is a professor of Korean studies at the Fletcher School at Tufts University, and he joins me now from Burlington, Massachusetts, to discuss the cheer squad and what it symbolizes. So, Sung Yoon, for those of us who've never heard of the Army of Beauties, who are they? How would you describe them? The North Korean young female cheerleaders are basically agents of the state. They are funded by the state, provided, uh, paid by the state, they are trained by the state. They put on, they exude a much more affable, attractive, softer image of North Korea. Glamorous, sexy are not the first words to come to mind when one thinks of North Korea. But these cheerleaders, you know, if there were uh, the gold medal, any medals for cheerleaders, they would reign supreme because they exude a sense of glamour, affability, and even charm. And they have in the past mesmerized South Koreans, men, women, the old, the young. They do wonders for North Korea's propaganda, image makeover, and they are having an effect already in South Korea. And you say that South Korea is a willing participant in this propaganda. Well, the Koreans are um, a people, a nation, that remained undivided until 1945. They have a, a strong sense of a shared past, ethnic homogeneity, even a myth of racial purity and all that. So the desire to be united one day, which is sort of an abstraction, but it's a taboo to come out against it, that desire is out there. And whenever there is a thaw in inter-Korean relations after a period of chaos, threats from North Korea, and North Korea, as we know, last year was on a full year-long bluster barrage in ballistic missile tests and nuclear tests. So this pageantry called the Olympics, the biggest stage on the world, is a fine opportunity for Kim Jong-un to wield the carrot and to make a move a pass at South mm -hmm. Korea so that South Korea turns to relaxing sanctions and subsidizing North Korea to the, to the tune of nearly $1 billion a year as South Korea used to in the early 2000s and mid-2000s. And you say that they're not really cheerleaders in the way that we in North America would think of cheerleaders, more like soldiers? Yes, this is serious business. If any of the cheerleaders were to go missing or to be found in a South Korean bar or misbehave, carry herself in ways that fall short of the strict standards of the North Korean state, then she and her family members left in North Korea would be in trouble. They represent North Korea at its most charming, most attractive. So they have a very important goal. And as we see, North Korea is putting this full charm offensive while the United States is coming across as grumpy and disgruntled with the Vice President of the United States in the region saying all the right things in terms of their validity, that North Korea is a prison state that starves and tortures its people. This outreach is merely a charade. North Korea is trying to hijack the games. All this is true, but I don't think those things need to be said at this particular time when the Olympics are all about celebration, celebration of the human spirit, fair play, peace, and all those good things. So I think in terms of PR, in terms of propaganda, we see that North Korea is actually a notch or two above the United States. How are they chosen? There's 230 members. How are they chosen? Well, they are chosen when they're young for their looks, their comportment, their academic standards as well. So they are part of the elites, and they have to come from a trusted family background. Every North Korean is born onto a political class. One has no say in the matter. There are 51 subsets, but largely, broadly speaking, there are three classes, the loyal class, the favorite class, that is, and then there's the middle class, if you will, called the wavering class, and then there's the hostile class. People born onto the despised hostile class have done no wrong. Their ancestors, grandparents may have come from South Korea or Japan, and thus you are branded a member of the hostile class. These cheerleaders come from the upper class because, again, uh, the unlikely but uh, devastating 
possibility of defection would be a huge embarrassment for the North Korean state. Sir, it was good to talk to you today. Thank you. Thank you. That was Sung Yoon Lee in Burlington, Massachusetts.